Trinity versus Godhead versus modalism. Going to illustrate the difference between these three different stands here. First, let's start off with the Trinity teaching. All right, the Trinity teaching consists of three separate bolts. All right, each one has the nut representing the body, the bolt itself representing the soul, and the washer representing the spirit. Okay, so the Trinity says there are three separate bolts here to illustrate my point each one having their own body, soul, spirit, All right? There are three separate, but they're actually just one in unity, in union, okay? They're kind of like this, you know? You could put them together and you get the, the Trinity symbol there, all right? I know that was exciting, but uh, that's the Trinity teaching there. So you have somebody comes up and they say, hey, those are three bolts. You say, no, actually, it's just one. Uh, okay, uh, how is it just one? Well, they're one in purpose. They're one in unity. Their divine essence brings them together. They're, they're one. They're, they look like three. No, they're just one. So what are you talking about? Trinitarians say there are three in heaven, and you know those three there, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. People say, okay, then there's three gods. No, there's just one God. Okay, so there's just one God like this over here. Oh, no, no, no. There's three separate persons, three separate beings, so to speak, and yet they're one in the sense that they all claim the title God, but they're not all holy God by themselves. They're, they're just, you know, there has to be the three there, and each one has the title of God, and there's just one God, but there's three separate beings called God. Okay, so what do you have here? Philosophy, all right? Here in the middle, we have the true biblical teaching, by the way, which, which is actually in the King James Bible, the Godhead. Okay, We have the same thing, the soul representing the bolt, the washer representing the spirit, and the nut representing the body. And here's how it works. The body can be separate from the spirit and the soul. Okay, they're separate, they're distinct, but yet they all come together. Man is created in, in the image of God. Man has a body, has a soul, has a spirit. Okay, right there. No philosophy needed. You can pretty much easily understand that according to the pages of Scripture. All right, one bolt, three separate parts. Not a problem. They can be together like this, or they can be separate. Okay, and again, I, I forgot to say this about the Trinity thing. They'll say the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, the Spirit is not the Father, but they're all one. Yeah, also called cuckooville. I'll show you another uh, way of saying cuckooville, and that is modalism. You say, what's modalism? Well, here we have Jesus only, the soul. You say, what's the, uh, what's the Spirit there? Yep. Oh, look at that. There's Jesus, the Spirit. Excuse me. And uh, what's the uh, body? Uh, zoop. Oh, hey, uh, Jesus, the body. See? Um, modalism is basically a teaching that they're never together. They're never separate. Okay? It's just always Jesus. Jesus in, on, in time, Jesus in eternity. But it's just Jesus. There's no separation there at all like the Godhead teaches, okay? Um, so what do you have? Well, it's always changing. When you have Jesus on the earth, well, there you go. But all of a sudden, whoop, hey, there's the Spirit, Jesus the Spirit, whoop, oh, Jesus the soul, right there. You know, God the Father, whoop, God the Spirit, whoop, God the Son, Jesus Christ. That's modalism. And here's the interesting thing about it. When these guys talk to a Bible-believing Christian that says, I believe in the Godhead, they say, wait a second, you say that there's three separate parts, there's distinction between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? We say, yes, that's true. They say, well, then you must be a Trinitarian. Three separate bolts. And we say, no, we don't believe in three separate bolts. One bolt consisting of three parts, three separate distinct 
parts. You get it? I'll just count here for those of you who are uh, challenged. One, two, three. One, two, three. They're separate, but they come together to form one unit. You see? That's the Godhead. Trinitarians, they hear us and they say, they hear us say, they're just one. Jesus is God and his, he is God, the flesh. The Father is the soul and the spirit there is the spirit of the Godhead. These three are one. Okay, you understand that? And what the Trinitarians do is they say, well, then you're a modalist over here. We're not a modalist. Why do these two groups claim that we're part of the other group? Why? Because these two groups are philosophy. This one's Bible believing right here. But you see the Trinitarians and other heretics like that, they'll say their favorite go-to verse to disprove that Jesus Christ and the Father are one and the same being. Uh, they'll ignore Isaiah 9, 6, or they'll say that there's actually two fathers. You know, unto us a child is given, a son, or a child is born, son is, son is given, and his name shall be the everlasting father. Look it up, Isaiah 9, 6. And what they'll do is they'll say there are two fathers or whatever else and things like this, but they'll go to numerous places in Scripture where it says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Okay? But they won't look at the key word in that verse, and that is until his enemies are made his footstool. Paraphrasing there, of course. Let me demonstrate how that works with this analogy here with the bolt. Okay? What do we have? They're all one. They all fit together, you see? They all come together like this. But you see, I need to do a job. So I get in and underneath my vehicle and I got to put a part in place. We'll just say a starter for illustration purposes. You know what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to take the nut off and the washer off. They're going to be separate until I put the starter in place. So I lean down there and I reach up in, I take the old one off and I put the new one up in there and I get it lined up and I say, okay, give me the bolt. I slide the bolt through. I got it through there. Give me the washer. Put the nut on there. You see? They're separate until something needs to be held together. Then they all come together. But you see, the Godhead teaching says that there's only one God. You see? And that is Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit. Just one God. Not three separate persons. One God with three individual parts, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of fighting back and forth. I don't really care. You know, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Body, soul, spirit. The three things that make up man. Where did we get that from? Man is created in God's image. You see, the only thing that really makes sense is the Godhead teaching, if you're a Bible-believing Christian. This modalism thing that just shifts and changes and whatever else, uh, that's false. And the Trinity teaching of there's three bolts, but there's only one bolt. And the one bolt consists of three bolts, but there's only one. Okay, um, you start believing in that and teaching that, you're ready for the rubber room. Okay, and a lot of people say Trinity type of terminology and things. Um, because they've never actually looked at the scriptures. They rely on traditions of men and teachings of men, specifically the Catholic Church, which is where this whole Trinity teaching comes from. It is their very core doctrine. But we'll finish up here with Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. There's three, but there are only one. And the one consists of three, but it's only one. What is that? Philosophy? Vain deceit? This is the soul, but it morphs and becomes the body when it needs to. The body morphs and becomes the spirit when it needs to. Philosophy. 
what it is, and you'll be spoiled through it. After the, tr the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Right there. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Just one. One God consisting of three parts. Three things, whatever you want to say. Body, soul, spirit. They can be a part, and right now, according to the scriptures, Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. But you know what? It's until I make thine enemies thy footstool, and then you enter in, into eternity. And you go, and there you have it. One throne in the end part of Revelation. Talked about that in other studies. Just one. He's only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is three. No, one. Just one. So, I hope that helps illustrate the difference between Trinity, Godhead, and modalism. Um, you're falling for either one of these, this Jesus, oneness, Pentecostal thing, or Trinitarianism over here. Uh, you've been led astray. And I dare say, if you're really hardcore, really militant, and against the Godhead teaching of Scripture, um, you're not saved. Just as simple as that. I would suggest that you get straightened out on this issue um, because it's very important to the Lord, um, his character, his makeup. And uh, the thing I've noticed, especially with the Trinitarian camp, is that they are all about demoting Jesus Christ every chance that they can. Well, he's the uh, second member of the Trinity. Well, he's lesser than God. Well, he's he's was created and whatever else. Yeah. That's what they're all about over here. This is the most satanic, most heretical teaching that there is. But you see, I'll just say this in closing, and that is this one's important because there are three beings that show up in the future that uh, Catholics are going to worship as God. Antichrist, false prophet, and the dragon. Satan himself on the earth in the time of Jacob's trouble. So it's very important for the Catholics to get this Trinity teaching in. That's why they love it so much. That's why it's the core doctrine of Roman Catholicism. Please don't fall for that deception. Jesus Christ is only one being. And He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all in one being.